Good day, everyone, and welcome to my presentation titled A First Field Model to Simulate Clark Initiation from Pitting Site in Isotropic and Anisotropic Elastoplastic Material. My name is Christian Matthew, and I'm from Virginia Tech, and my co authors are listed as shown. We use a first field method where we introduce a first field variable to distinguish the solid domain and the liquid domain. We introduce the solid domain to be one and the liquid domain to be zero. So th these equations are for the collision model, that is the total free energy of the system and uh, the evolution of the first field variable. We define with this equation, L is the interface mobility, and this equation is the Alankan equation with nonlinear dependence on of a potential. For the isotropic part, we use the mechanical strain, which is equal to the sum of elastic strain and plastic strain. We also use the linear return approach to calculate our tire stress and also use the effective plastic strain, which is required to return the stress to the use surface. Then for the anisotropic part, we decompose the deformation gradient into elastic and plastic part also and define our second pillar, vehicle stress times or resolve shear stress, slip rate and slip system strength with these following equations, respectively. Then we couple collision and mechanical modules together. We are in the first equation, which we use the effective plastic strain, which is required to initiate the film rupture. And the second equation, we use the slip accumulated slip, which is required to damage the film. Then in the third equation, which is for the mechanical modules, we define the divergence of stress field to be zero and introduce this small number psi, which is required to ensure that our numerical computation is stable in the degraded part. At the end, this is our governing equation. We modeled this governing equation and um, implemented it in the open source modes and we use adaptive mesh and adaptive time step size to capture the evolution of our complex shape. So this is the the domain of the 2D domain we, we model and simulated as shown here. This is the boundary condition, the Dirichlet and the normal boundary condition are defined accordingly. The, the pit is introduced at the top with first variable to be zero and the body, the solid domain, the first variable is one and the constant strain rate is defined at the right hand side. We use this material, material parameters in the collision and the mechanical part for the isotropic material in 2D. Then this is the evolution of the stress and the phase field variable from our simulation. So this is the adaptive adaptive mesh that we use to capture the evolution of the complex shape. So this is the evolution of the phase field variable at different time and also at different film lecture values. The first row, there is no mechanical load, so there is no pit to crack transition. We only have a pit bloat. But in the rest, we have there is a different type of film lecture values. We have different different uh, evolution of pit to crack transition or evolution of first three variables, as you can see. And this is the corresponding Vermeer stress for the 2D isotropic material. Then for the anisotropic material, this is the material, material parameter that we use for cubic symmetry. And we defined our domain in the 3D domain as shown. First, we also initial, this is initial pit with first variable, first variable of zero. And for the solid domain, is it is one. And also a constant strain rate is introduced here. And this is the result for this anisotropic material at different crystal orientation where there is an overlap of the stress and phase free variable, as you can see here too. So conclusion, film dissolution mechanism is considered the selected model parameter we have studied to understand the pit to crack transition both in 2D and 3D in both anisotropic and isotropic material. So in all cases, a pit to crack transition was observed and the crack initiation could strongly depend on crystal orientation Acknowledgement, I acknowledge these bodies for their support for this research. Thank you.